Alright. Hey guys, my name is Five Storm. Welcome to another tutorial. Uh, if you couldn't tell, I'm very tired, but there's a good reason for that, and I'll explain that right now. It is 2.30 a.m., and I have just recorded the last two t Let's Make a videos, both an hour and 40 minutes each. However, I thought it'd be best to try uh, recording the tutorial right after the Let's Make It, so I just have all these items burned into my brain. We're doing that, so uh, welcome to the tutorial on League of Legends items. In this, in this case, we're covering five League of Legends epic items, and the other two videos of tutorials coming later will be covering Legendary and Mythic, respectively. I could have done something else, but I couldn't think of much at the time. But that's how it's going to be for the next three tutorials. So with that said, uh, we'll be getting into the swing of things, and some of the items will differ a little bit from their uh, original uh, incarnations, but I hope you can bear with me and how I uh, actually did it, or recreated them. So yeah, let's get on to the plugins and, um, what's it called? Plugins... I, I'm drawing blanks. Plugins and tips and tricks that I used along the way. I ask that you forgive me for any tiredness going on, but let's get on with the plugins. Going on to our plugins here, there are only three we need, however we will definitely need all three of them for every single one of these items, and I hope we only need those three for uh, the other two tutorials coming. But I haven't made the last make it for those, so we'll see. Anyways, the three, not this one, the three we'll be needing are, uh, is it battle? Do I need- I think I do need Battle Engine Core just because we need it for- No we don't. No we don't. Uh, let's just say we need Battle Engine Core for now. If you don't need it, don't worry, then you don't need it at that point. But we need Buff and States Core, as well as Auto Passive States. If Auto Passive States requires, it does not require it. I'm gonna say Battle Engine Core isn't- but do not do not quote me on that. If you do need Battle Engine Core and you don't have Battle Engine Core for these items, you should probably pick up Battle Engine Core. Besides that, we are going to be talking about some tricks that help me, and I had them in a tab on my other monitor here, in multiple tabs. So the tips and tricks I use to help me along the way are Bubble Wrap, which is very important for one of them because I had to use a cooldown uh, sort of deal for one of the items effects. Uh, Thorn Bind Hostage. Mostly so I can separate the damage so that you can see uh, the original amount of damage plus the bonus damage that a weapon or an item may inflict. Chaos Bolt. That one's boring because I had to use that one for critical hits. Uh, learning, I guess. I guess I didn't really need it that much, but I'm gonna probably credit in the description anyways. And uh, I didn't write- I didn't- I don't have it on tab here, but Annie's Disintegrate uh, tips and tricks did help because uh, one of the items involves uh, defeating enemies, so I did use that to help. With that said, it is time to begin the long, long journey of every single item. The first item we'll be covering is Spectre's Cowl. No, I'm only pulling up the description here. So Spectre Cow Spectre's Cowl, while I open the database, is an item in which after taking damage from a champion, you'll be gaining a hundred- well, that's, that's, that's a word for word. Uh, basically, after you take damage from an enemy, you'll be gaining 150% base health regeneration. In this case, we'll be using 1.5% uh, HP regeneration uh, for 10 seconds. In this case, we're using 5 turns, th uh, no, 3 turns for a specific reason, and uh, duration increases with subsequent uh, enemy damage. So we are basically going to be doing that except, well again, uh, it's 1.5% HP regeneration for us and we're only using 3 turns and the reason why we're only putting- I, it actually used to be 5 turns but the reason why we're adding making it 3 turns is because to recreate the duration increasing effect we have to add, we have to use the buff and states core uh, apply, reapply turns which you'll see later, but we don't want to reapply five turns. That's a long time. I know it's like a small a, a small amount of regeneration, but we don't want to overdo it. So we're saying it to three turns. All right, we're gonna go straight to Spectre Cal Spectre's Cal Activate. Spectre's Cal Activate has a very simple uh, note box here. 
We're using the note tag's custom react effect. If this is HP effect, so if the attack taken towards this unit which has this passive effect is an HP damaging move, and the value is greater than zero, because we do want to have been taken damage, then the target, aka the user, because react is, as I've always said, and I will continue to say because anyone might forget, and I might too. Uh, the target in this case will be the user having the passive effect because in custom react effect, um, it, the roles are reversed. The user is the one attacking, and the target is the one reacting. The target will be gaining the state 35, which is actually our Spectre's Cal state. Now, I have the description here in case you want to read over it. We want to have this state remove at battle end, have a turn duration of 3, and uh, of course generate 1.5% HP per turn. Uh, well, all we had to do is actually use the note tag and reapply add turns so that whenever we happen to keep gaining this state using this custom react effect right here, uh, it'll just reset or add the amount of turns to the turn counter. So if it's like say two turns, we add three more turns, it's just gonna go up to five. That's all we're doing here. Spectre's Cowl is definitely one of the simpler ones. Oh, I should probably mention that we are recreating the effects of the items only and not the stats gained, such as Spectre Cowl's 25 magic resistance. We are only trying to recreate the effect, which in this case is called incorporeal. Alright, with that said, let's go on to the demonstration, because we're doing solo demonstrations for this one. Alright, as we're taking a little break, Let's go to demonstrations. First up, we have, of course, uh, well, Spectre's Gal, which upon taking damage, we'll be regenerating health for three turns. And if we do happen to get hit once more, it'll be reset. Or, well, no, it won't be reset. It'll be extended slightly. Three turns is actually quite a long time. We're gonna attack again. We're gonna get hit. Our counter of two increased to five, and it's now back to four because of turn count decreasing. Let's do it one more time just so we can show it off. And also, you can tell it's also actually regenerating HP. So we're now at six. Well, it was seven, but again, it goes down because that's how it works. All right, next one. All right, I'm gonna be doing. Uh, I'm gonna be recording the uh, explanations all at once and demonstrations after, but I don't really have to explain that. <laughs> but um, Hexic Alternator is probably one of the more complicated ones. I think it actually is the most complicated one because this is the one with the cooldown. Basically, let's go to Hexic Al Alternator's description here. Hexic Alternator is an item in which damaging an enemy champion in the description, but just enemy in here, deals 50 to 125 base on level, bonus magic damage, 40 second cooldown. Um, so in RPG Maker here, we're making it so, actually it is 50 to 125 base on level, and uh, I'm gonna be explaining that soon. Bonus magic damage, we're gonna talk about that as well. 40 second cooldown is being reduced to 3 turns, and we're setting the 3 turns because that is what Bubble Wrap has, and uh, I, I don't really want to change that, so let's go with three turns. So, we did I did actually use the actual formula, well, I'm, I'll cover that when I get to it. Let's start off with the Hextech Alternator activation. Now, if you want to get more insight to how this may work, and also the copy and paste version of it, you do want to go straight to the Bubble Wrap Tips and Tricks, uh, either on the wiki or whatever then it'll be easy access. I do change some of the names to more fit the item, but otherwise not much has changed, but I will be explaining the changes. So this activation state, nothing too special. Custom battle effect, we're gonna have variable hex tech equal to 37. This will be used as our state ID, uh, because 37 will be our state ID over here. We'll be adding the state hex tech, so immediately we're putting that to use, adding state 37 to the user. Then user dot underscore hex tech cooldown, or whatever name you want to give it, will be set to zero. This will be our uh, starting cooldown because we do not want a cooldown yet. I'm trying to explain this, but I do not know the topic too well. I'm going to try to explain it as best as I can 
to see if I understand it as well. Custom regenerate effect. This is this occurs during regeneration, such as HP regeneration. So basically, at near the start of a turn, if the user's H, uh, hex tech cooldown or whatever again is equal to user hex tech cooldown. Okay, I need I, I'm gonna need bubble wrap straight up to explain this. So according to the uh, description, it says default the bubble wrap cooldown to zero. So I'm gonna guess this just defaults it to zero. Like in general. I'm gonna assume that's what it is. I can't explain this part. I can only not explain this part too well. That's the only one I don't typically get. Now we're gonna check if the cooldown is above zero. So if the user's hex tech cooldown is greater than zero, we're gonna be decreasing that cooldown by one. And if it happens to have reached less than zero for that cooldown, uh, we're going to be getting the state to 4, Hextech, 37, play animation, and we're going to be adding the Hextech state, just so we can uh, reapply the state when it's ready. Uh, oh, I removed something, sorry. Uh, now we'll be going on to the actual Hextech Oscillator, which is when things get crazy. We have a little description here, we're going to remove this at battle end, though it is often applied at the beginning of battle, of course. Oh boy, this part. We have a lot of information here, mostly about formulas and stuff. And I'm gonna be talking about the changes, of course. Custom confirm effect. This will be different from the bubble wrap effect because bubble wrap is uh, reactionary, but this one is uh, when the user attacks, because we'll be applying bonus magic damage to a user's attack. If the attack that the user uses is an HP effect and does more than zero damage, we're going to be having a variable of damage equal to math.seal. This is going to get complicated. Math.seal, well, we're going to go with this first. Uh, we're going to have a formula where it says, our first parentheses is user.level times 0.76. And we're going to have outer parentheses that say 49 plus whatever user.level times 76, 76 is. So if the user level is 1, we'll be getting 0.76 straight up. And then, and then we'll be adding that to 49, and we'll have mat ceiling, which is not not just mat ceiling; it's called mat ceiling. Round it up to whatever uh, it rounds up to. So, 0.76 would round up to one. So we're getting 50 flat damage at level one. Then we're gonna have the target gain HP minus the variable for damage. Gain HP, if you have negative gain HP, then it's taking damage. Then we have a t the target start the damage pop up. And then there was also another thing that I might have need to write here, but I think it's called clear pop ups. I'm not sure if I need that here, but it doesn't seem like I have any bugs without it. So for now, I'm just leaving it like this. And then we're gonna have the user remove the state, state ID. So this state itself. Because uh, at that point, we do need a well, the effect has taken place, we, we uh, change the formula and increase the damage, so we do want to reset the cooldown, and by that, we mean a uh, custom removal effect, uh, note tag, and we're going to set the lower cooldown to 3 turns using this script call right here. Now, to explain how this formula was calculated, I have a little thing here. Uh, Basically, 49 plus user's level equals 50 at level 1. 76, which is 125 minus 49, because we have to use 49 because the, the user never starts off at level 0, and we want to use the user's level as a uh, as a value in the formula, so we're setting it to 49. So 125 minus 49 is 76, divided by 98, which is uh, not negative. 76. It's 0.76 by itself. I'm pretty sure. It's it's about. Oh no no, that's that's an about sign. Sorry, I cannot see from here. It's a it, it's approximately 0.76. It actually continuously it says 0 0.76, 76, 76. And then that's why we're using this formula because uh, uh, 98 is levels to grow. So every level you get 0.76 bonus damage. Of course, it rounds up with the formula. And of course, um, I also explain this. 
Uh, if you wanted to actually do bonus magical damage instead of just flat out bonus damage, uh, you're going to be taking the entire formula we just used and then subtract target magic defense. I have to sit it out and it does indeed work. So something like this should work. Uh, if it isn't, I apologize. I might have put too many parentheses, but that should work. Yeah, it, it looks right. Uh, so with that said, uh, that one that one's finally done explaining, so let's go on to uh, the demonstration. Alright, for Hexic Alternator, we have a cooldown of course. Hexic Alternator is, is uh, indicated by the hourglass in the, uh, the icon hourglass that's below our name. So we're going to be attacking and we should be doing some bonus damage. Uh, we are level 99 so we are doing 125 bonus damage. It is the top number, not the bottom number. Uh, however, if we happen to strike again, we won't be doing 225, why should we be doing just 100? And actually, this is how it is until our Hexic Alternator comes back. We gotta give it time though. Alright, our Hexic Alternator is back, indicated by our animation. And we'll subtract once more, and there it is, 225 damage. I quite like this item, or at least this effect that we created in RPG Maker. Alright, what's next? Hexic Alternator took a long time, didn't it? Don't worry, next few are a lot shorter. Warden's Mail is, well, every basic attack damage taken by the user is reduced by 5 plus 3.5 per 1000 max HP, but with a maximum of 40% reduction each. However, whether or not that 40% reduction takes place, I mean, it is very unlikely to happen. You have to have a lot of max HP for that to happen. I think. Wait, no, no, no. If it's lower, if it's lower attack power, I think you should be able to reduce it. Like, if, if someone has, like, super low attack, you should be able to reduce it. I haven't tested it out officially. I want to say it works with what I have here, but uh, with this conditional branch. If it doesn't work, do let me know. If you do want to use it, of course. Uh, yeah. Here I, here I say, uh, I was unable to test, uh, if the reduced damage would increase back to 60% because of max HP having issues. Wait, I'm having issues with max HP. But yeah, we do recreate this effect, and here's how. We're gonna have a custom react effect note tag here, and uh, if this attack that the user is suffering is an attack straight up because we are checking basic attacks only. I, I barely learned this, but apparently that's how you do it. And this is an HP effect. And the value is greater than zero. The the the, the, the triple, the triple here. Uh, we're gonna have another variable max, and we're gonna set that to value times 0.6, so we can have a good idea of how much damage we want it to ha be minimum after the decrease in damage. So if it's 100 damage, we don't want it to go below 60. Then we're gonna have variable reduce equals another complicated sort of deal. I'll explain. We're gonna start with target max HP divided by thousand. If a t so, we're, this is how we're gonna be checking how, uh, how many thousands a user has. Uh, if they only have two thousand HP, that's gonna be straight up a two. But what happens if they have a thousand HP, or at least less than a thousand HP? Well, if they have like five hundred HP, we're gonna be using math floor. By doing that, it's gonna set that all the way to zero. So, they did not benefit from a 3.5 bonus at all. They just have a straight flat 5 decrease. So that said, at that point, they have 500 HP, they only reduce 5 damage. If they had 2000 HP, they reduce 5 plus uh, 7, I think. So that'd be, they reduce the damage taken by 12. Then we're going to be subtracting the value by how much was reduced. Other than that, we have another conditional branch checking if the value is less than the maximum. And if it is, we're gonna be sending value to equal max. I'm not sure how many equals you need here. I think you only need at least one, maybe two. Besides that, much simpler. At least it's finished. So uh, we'll be going on to Burn Barrier, which is where the changes start to come in. It appears that Warden's Mail. Well, the effect. Well, you, you just read, you just heard the effects. So Warden Mail, of course. Uh, well, reduce the amount of damage we take based on our max HP and uh, a flat 5. So, uh, we don't have to attack here. 
their attack will deal 78. Now, what I haven't told anyone yet is that the basic attack actually starts at 100 damage. Flat damage, not in, not uh, changed by any uh, stat modifier, which means uh, we reduce 22 damage there. And we calculate that by the fact that, well, if you want to check how to calculate it, we did take 5 plus 3.5. So 3 from 5 times 5, because we have 5,000 HP, is about uh, 15 to 20-ish, and then you add that to the 5, it's about 25, and we, t and we reduce, since 78 is 22 less than 100, we reduce 2020, 2022, 22 damage as a result of uh, Warden's Mail. I don't know how else to explain it, because I just explained it through math, and I don't really know how else to show it, but... You're gonna have to take my word on the 100 damage thing. But regardless, I believe Verdant Barrier is next? I think. Yeah, it should be. So Verdant Barrier is an interesting uh, little uh, passive effect. A killing a unit would tip- well, the original description says killing a unit grants 0.3 magic resistance up to a maximum of 9. However, flat, flat stat increases aren't really something we can do easily unless we use equip core on a weapon. And since I, I do want these effects to be usable regardless if you have a weapon or not, I'm going to be making it so killing a unit grants plus 10% magic defense up to a maximum of 50. However, that does mean we have to make quite a few more states, and I'll be explaining that soon. So we're changing it like that, as opposed to 5.3 and 9. And in this particular situation, we're going to make it so the stat changes will be removed after battle ends, kind of like a League of Legends match. Because like your, your bonuses do not carry over to your next match. I know it may be hard to believe, but they do not carry over. Anyways, we're gonna have this very this is just kind of like a checking uh, conditional branch. It's not really used for anything else. Custom conclude effect. If the target's HP less than equal is less than equal zero, custom conclude conclude effect is after the user has attacked an enemy and the damage has been dealt. If the target's HP is less than or equal to zero. I'm pretty sure I have tested this with single targets. Now that then I think about it, I'm not sure if it works on multiple targets. I'm gonna assume it does, but do not quote me on that. If the target's HP is less than or equal to zero, at that point they'd be probably dead. And if the user's H or if the user is affected by state 46, they'll be adding state 47. I'll explain that soon. Uh, if the user is affected by state 45, they'll be adding. Basically, they'll be adding the next uh, state up. That's basically an upgrade from the previous state they had. And at the end here, we have if the user is not affected, indicated by this exclamation mark, exclamation point. If they're not affected by 43, which is the lowest tier state, then they'll be adding state 43. And then that'll be the end of the custom conclude effect. It's just a large conditional branch. Going on to our actual passes uh, or pass buffs here, each of these simply dictates uh, how much magic defense you get per kill, uh, how much of the increase you get based on what tier you have. So this is magic defense up one. Uh, upon your first kill, you'll be getting 10% magic defense, and the custom apply effect simply just shows that the state has plus 10% shown on it, shown on it, just so you can show the player how much your uh, magic defense buff is at. Other than that, they, they basically just all increase 120%, uh, 20%, but we also want to remove the state prior. So this state 44 will be removing state 43. And as it goes on, you can pretty much tell how it's gonna go. Other than that, yeah, let's go into the demonstration for this one. Warden's Mail is the item that, of course, raises our magic defense every time we kill an enemy. Now instead of fighting Ash here, we're fighting Mark from 100% Oranges. Because, well, I didn't really want to change the stats of Ash. And Mark, by default, has 5 HP. So, they should be easy to pick out. We're gonna kill this first one here. Never mind, we're not gonna kill that first one there. We're gonna wait a little bit because we just can't hit anything. On killing the first one, you can see below our name, we have a plus 10% on a shield icon, which indicates that we have increased our magic defense by 10. Well, that, the, that in itself does not tell us we increased our magic defense, but I can assure you it has increased our magic defense. I have personally checked. 
So if we kill the second mark, you'll see that it increases to 20%. It's actually a different state, but it doesn't you can't really tell from the uh, states the state box itself itself. But if you look very closely when we kill this third one and look closely at the state at the at the bottom, of course, you can very briefly see that it increased to 30%. Now, with that said, I think that is it. Uh, of course, killing enemy. Increased magic defense. So, I believe the final item is Rage Knife. The final item we have today is Rage Knife, which I actually find very interesting. Now, Rage Knife is an item that converts every 1% critical hit chance uh, into 1.75 bonus physical damage, capped at 100% crit, and we will be covered that as well. For a maximum of 175 bonus physical damage, because 1.75 times 100 is, well, 175. Anyways, uh, do note that the bonus damage here uh, isn't necessarily uh, accounting critical strike modifiers. I, I didn't feel it was necessary, but if you want to... I'm not sure if the critical strike modifiers basically change anything about it. Anyways, custom confirm effect is what we'll be using as our note tags here. If this is an HP effect, and the value is greater than zero, so same thing, if the user is attacking, it's similar to Hextech Alternator, if the user is attacking, HP effect, more than zero damage, we're going to be having variable damage here, very similar to the same to Hextech Alternator. We're going to have a calculation, user.cri, or critical, times 100. This will be, this, this, this little equation, user.crit times 100, is simply to check, or at least to make the critical strike chance a, a, like a, a whole number. User.crit will usually be like a decimal, so if you have 4% crit, you have 0 0.04. So we want to multiply that by 100. Then we do want to multiply that by 1.75. Then we will finish it off by using mac.ceiling, so we can increase whatever that is to the highest whole number, or the next whole number. So if it's like 160.8 or something, something like that, it'll go to 161. I don't really need to explain that too much, but you get the idea. Now we're gonna have a conditional branch within this conditional branch, saying if the damage is greater than 175, uh, we're gonna be sending damage, a uh, variable damage equals to 175. This does work. I've actually tested this out at least, you know, compared to uh, what was it, Warren's mail. I think it's Warren's mail. I actually did test it out with 200% crit rate, and it does reduce 175. Then the target will be getting HP minus damage and have a damage pop up. Very exactly the same, like Hextech Alternator. Then we have a, a custom confirm effect because actually, that's literally just it. You just get the bonus damage, and I didn't mention this, but I will mention it here. Uh, if you do want to do, again, bonus physical damage to the bonus damage, you take the whole formula here and you subtract it by uh, the uh, target dot defense so you can get physical damage instead of just bonus damage. But yeah, let's go into the demonstration one last time. Okay, now as for our final item, we have Rage Knife, which of course increases based on our critical hit rate. Plus more stuff after that, but... It's 1.75 times our critical hit rate. The base RPG Maker critical hit rate is like 4%. So this first attack should deal about 7 or 9 increased damage. Sure, why not? However, we just gained a state that I have not talked about because I just added it just now. This state increases our critical hit rate by 500%. Now you may be thinking it increases our damage by... Uh, a grand amount, but if you uh, paid attention to the tutorial and listened to my explanations, you would know that it will not do many, many, much more damage. Well, it does, but to a degree, it only increases it up to 175. <laughs> and there it is! It doesn't increase it to like, what, 500 damage? <laughs> but, you know, it's 175, and that's the goal we want to accomplish. So with that said, I believe Rage Knife is done. This also, includes, this also concludes my recording sort of night, but yeah, let's go to the outro. I don't know why I did this after doing two Let's Make It episodes as recording it. It's only 3.06am actually, I recorded this tutorial in one take, 
pretty much. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I apologize for anything I may have uh, doze off of on, doze off on, or left out, or went on a tangent about. I know Hexic Alternator went on for a while, but I did have to explain cooldowns. But yeah, thank you so much. Uh, next uh, tutorials will be uh, Legendary and Mythic Islands respectively. Uh, I think I revealed that at the beginning. If I didn't, here it is. And I will be making Let's Make Us for those too. Today is December 7th, uh, Tuesday and at 3 a.m. And uh, this will be coming up hopefully in on the weekend. So yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, again, I apologize for anything that may be wrong because I'm tired. Yeah. See you guys and stay safe. Bye.